3. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Adam with Antique Automotive Service. Today I'm going to be taking a much closer look at this 70 Buick GSX Stage 1. Uh, since it's got original paint, I want to take a closer look at mostly the stripes and just kind of do a little once over on the car to show you and, and myself what we need to look for with an original paint car. And also if you're restoring one of these cars, you can get a little bit closer with the stripes because there isn't a very good stripe kit on the market that is on the money. So there's a lot of measuring involved and uh, about eight hours of taping if you want to paint one of these cars. So let's get started. Okay, since all the paint correction has been done in this car, it looks a lot better. We did not touch the black paint on this car to preserve the, uh, the sheen on it because there's a lot of debate on whether the stripes are all supposed to be gloss or all matte or semi-gloss or just the hood is supposed to be matte and these side stripes are supposed to be gloss. But as far as I can tell, it's all about the same. So taking a look at this car a little bit closer, you can see a little bit of a color difference between the fenders, uh, fender and the door. The door has been repainted. I can see that it had some body work done on it. So, but that's the only part on the car that looks like it's been painted. The most common thing that people look for when they see an, an original paint GSX is this, uh, this little kick in the paint right above the center of the rear wheels on both sides. Sometimes they're really, really visible and sometimes they are just barely you know, maybe the paint is just thicker, but on the passenger side on this car, it's quite a bit different. But that's usually a pretty good indicator that it's got original paint on it, regardless of how glossy or matte the stripes are, because after 50 years of polishing this black paint, it's going to be shiny no matter what. But that's a very good indicator of original paint. These cars were painted at the factory just like all the other ones, except the, these stripes were installed after the car was finished. So you're gonna see black and red overspray sometimes on these door handles and they're not masked very well usually. And you see some slop all around there. And that's usually the way it is on all these door handles. And it's also, I mean, the, the paints, stripes aren't perfect. So don't expect a perfect paint job from the factory with these stripes. And you can also see on this car, right there, right in the center of the spoiler has another mask line that isn't perfectly lined up. Looking at the hood, there's not a whole lot of weird details on it that I could tell you about. But in 70 and 71, the hood grill bezels are painted body color. And then in 72, they were black. The stripes do not go straight down once they hit the edge here. They're bit, they just kind of, the tape line just kind of falls in on both sides. You can see it, it doesn't, that one's hard to see but the tape line does not go straight vertical. It, it kind of goes at an angle. So you basically, the, when you tape this thing down, the tape wants to go at an angle when you hit that edge. There's one thing that I never knew before looking at this original paint car was that the, the stripe doesn't follow the top line, uh, you know, the top body line 100%. So it is a little bit flatter than the actual arch of the fender. Unfortunately, I did not realize that when I did this car and I took and followed the top of the fender to a T. So it's, it's got a little bit more swoop in it than the original paint car does. Another thing I never noticed until I sat in this car was that the, the black stripes go all the way back around the back side of the hood. 
The red does not. It stops right at the top of the fender, or uh, top of the hood, but it, that black continues all the way around. So that's news to me. So it does look like this quarter panel on the left side had a little bit of body work done right about here, and there's a blend right about here with the paint, but it looks, it's seamless, You just but it's it's been blended. So inside here, you can see how sloppy the factory had those, and you can see kind of a tape line with the uh, repaint right there. Also just notice there's a, there's a run in the factory paint. Isn't that wild? This is another important spot to document because you don't, if you don't know, you don't know with where this stripe stops on the quarter panel and picks back up on the spoiler. So the paint stops literally at the edge of the spoiler and then it overlaps just a little bit on top of the quarter panel. And these factory stripes are, you know, they're not perfect. But it's super important to make sure that since we don't have a very good stencil kit or anything on the market, that all these measurements get recorded as well as possible. There is some paperwork out there, out there that has all the measurements on there that you need. I have it. There's an old CB antenna used to be on there. So all that documentation is super important to get this paint stripe correct or else it's going to look wrong and it'll stick out like a sore thumb. Since I'm walking around this car, I'll just do a quick once over on it. All original interior, it's got the faux speed. It does have aftermarket gauges under the dash there. Both front seats have splits in them, just in the bottom halves. Carpet looks like it's in good shape. Front mat is kind of chewed up a little bit, but the back seat's in good shape. Dusty, a little bit. Headliner is in excellent condition. The rubber's a little dry, just like all the rest of them. And most of them still get the original fat grip GSX wheel. The trunk. Oops, wrong key. Got a bunch of crap in it, but all original uh, sloppy holes that were cut for the spoiler. I do believe this splatter paint is aftermarket stuff because it's got a, a grit to it and it doesn't look like the original aqua splatter. Looks like that Delco paint in a can. But this car is virtually rust free. It does, I mean, there's no issues on this stuff. This is just old and crummy. There's the original paint dab on there. The only real rust I found was there's one little tiny hole right there that I can see. So there may be a little bit more under this uh, stainless, but that's pretty typical of GM cars of this vintage. Taking a look at the engine compartment, this engine has been rebuilt. 30 over pistons, I don't know what cam in it is in it, I think it's stock or stockish because it doesn't have any uh, lope or anything to it. But I believe all this, the black stuff under the hood has been painted, except for under the hood, you know, the actual under hood itself, that's, that's all original. You got the original grill with, it's got a crack in it. Somebody tried to repair it before, but it didn't hold. Replated hood latch. Correct oversized pulley on the AC compressor. Correct gloss on the air cleaner. I believe that is unpainted original. I could be wrong. Let's see, yeah, that looks like it's never been painted. Let's get the fan shroud looks right, it's just got some funky funky looking feel to it. So 
got the original hood tack on it and it works overall the car is in pretty darn good shape it's got a bunch of little chips and dings and stuff that people over the years have dabbed yellow paint on and whatnot but you know this is all super solid it's just a little bit of mud right there really really solid car door. There's some Wolverine scratches. A little bit of rust, surface rust popping through the paint there. The black on the hood is probably the worst condition paint on the whole car. But considering the orig originality of the car, I wouldn't do anything to it. There aren't too many of these original paint cars left, so cherish what you got. Well, that's going to do it for me today. If you need more information on striping your GSX or your GSX Tribute or clone, whatever you want to call it, feel free to contact me through one of the methods in the description below. I think there's Facebook and Instagram, and I think I might have an email address on there or website. Anyway, I'll do, but I can email you over anything that I've got. It's all in PDF form, so that should be pretty easy. Also, if you need more information on these cars, please go to v8buick.com. That's v8buick.com, and there's a wealth of information on the board there that will answer any question that you have regarding this type of car and even some of the bigger cars like Rivieras or Centurions or Electras. So... If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my page and like this video. Tell all your friends and family and neighbors and dogs and cats and, I don't know, whoever else you think you can think of. And I'll see you next time. Hey, what's up, everybody? Huh. Hey, what's up? <laughs> this one is a... So anyway, um, there is a website called v8buick.com. I had it right.